operations. First thing I told you guys, if you're solving for log, you have to get this together to be one logarithm. So therefore, we need to condense this, right? You have to condense it down to one logarithm. So if I have a 1 half, I know that goes up top. Log of x minus, oh, did I not write the log in there? Right? Sorry about that. Um, log of x plus 4 raised to the 1 half equals 1. Is everybody following me? This is the rules of condensing that we did the previous class period. Now remember, raising something to a rational power can be rewritten as a root. Now remember, when you subtract two logarithms, that's the same thing as division, right? So this is log of x divided by the square root of x plus 4 equals 1. Something raised to the 1 half power is the same thing as the square root, right? Subtracting, you write division of 1 power. Now remember, if we don't have a base and it's a regular logarithm, then we know it's base 10. So if I wanted to solve this, I can't use the 1 to 1 property, but I can convert this to exponential form. So I can rewrite this as 10 to the first power equals x over the square root of x plus 4. Now, to solve for x, you can't have an x in the denominator. So I'm going to get rid of the x in the denominator by multiplying by an x plus 4 on both sides. And therefore, I have 10 times the square root of x plus 4 times 10 equals x. Um, then I'd get rid of the uh, I'd get rid of the square root by squaring both sides. So remember, you square both of these, so that's going to be 100 times uh, x plus 4 equals x squared. Then I would distribute. Now I see that this is a quadratic, so I'd set it equal to 0. 400, thank you. All right. Does everybody see why I set it equal to 0? Because it's a quadratic, right? And then I just needed to be able to determine, well, is there any two numbers that multiply to give you 400 that add to give you negative 100? Any two numbers that multiply to give you 4 add to give you negative 1? It would be negative 400. You are absolutely correct. Thank you. But that doesn't really help, still help us out with it being the solving portion, right? So if we can't solve a quadratic by factoring, um, then we can always look into doing what? Quadratic formula. That's right. So I'm going to just double check, make sure I didn't. Uh, what section was this? 3.5. 3. Yep. So then we'd go ahead and use the quadratic formula. So if you guys don't remember the quadratic formula, x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Calculator I can use. So I get it's minus, um, well, that's going to be plus. <laughs> so eleven thousand six hundred. Yep. Yeah, it, you're right, but it, all right, but still, once it's squared, it shouldn't affect it. Um, so that becomes ten thousand, and then plus sixteen, um, sixteen hundred. So that's ten thousand. 
11,600 uh, divided by 2. So I'll do the square root of that answer, which is 107.70. And then really, um, I'll do plus 100, and then divide that by 2. So I get x is approximately 103.85. And then I'll do 100 minus the square root of 11600. And divide that by 2. And or x is approximately negative 3.85. So remember, guys, when you have this, you got to double check your answers. So when I do my quadratic formula, and you guys can verify, and by looking at the answer in the back of the book, I realize that I did my math correctly. Um, again, though, we have to go and plug back our answers. Here we have a negative answer. Can we plug the negative answer back into our logarithm? No. So therefore, this is extraneous. So our only correct solution is right there. Okay. So please, guys, I know it's a very common thing to get to a problem, realize that it's not factorable, and to assume that you did